In this video, we will show you how to assemble a hinged door, build the door frame, and install it on your polytunnel. Here are the parts you'll need. Domestic hinged doors come in a standard width and a wide width option. Both standard and wide options are assembled in the same way. The double door option is made from two standard doors. Constructing the doors in the warmth of your garage or on a hard flat surface is easier than trying to perform the operation on site. Both the standard and wide doors are made up of two uprights and three cross pieces. The uprights are 50mm by 50mm timber and are 1.8m long. The cross pieces are also 50mm by 50mm timber but are a different length. Cross pieces for a standard door measure 59.5 centimeters and for wide doors the measurement is 79.5 centimeters. The remaining pieces of timber in the pack are battens, which we will use to secure the door panels to the door. To get started, we will drill three pilot holes in each upright with a 3 mm timber drill bit. Using a tape measure, mark a position of the holes on the upright with a pencil. Holes are required 3 cm in from each end of the upright and the third hole needs to be 65 cm from one end. Ensure you drill the holes central to the width of the timber. Lay the two upright parallel to each other ensuring that the holes align and then position the three cross pieces between the two uprights centrally with the holes. Once you are happy with the alignment, Screw them together using 75mm screws supplied in the door furniture kit. We will now strengthen the joints with nail plates supplied in the door furniture kit. Position a nail plate centrally across the joints and nail into place using twisted nails. Nail plates only need to be added to one face of the door. We will now fit the covering panels to the door. The polythene panel is fitted to the bottom section of the door and the net panel to the top. The top of the door is the end with the smaller rectangle. You will fit the panels to the side which does not have nail plates. Lay the polythene panel over the door. Ensure one edge is flush with the middle cross piece and secure using a staple gun. Now lay the net panel over the top half of the door and secure to the middle cross piece. Continuing with the net panel, pull it tight to remove any wrinkles and secure it to the top cross piece. Now work down one side and secure it to one upright. Pull it tight across the width and secure to the opposite upright. The polythene panel is secured in the same way. Pull it tight to the bottom of the door and secure it to the bottom cross piece. Secure it to one upright, then pull the polythene panel tight across the width, ensuring there are no wrinkles and creases, and secure with a staple gun. Finally, nail battens on top of the door panels. Nails should be approximately 20 centimeters apart. This will further secure the panels in position. The battens are 19mm by 38mm timber and come in 1.8m lengths. If you have standard doors you will have been supplied with 3 battens per door. For wide doors you will have 4 battens per door. Two battens are used on the two uprights. The remaining battens will need to be cut to fit onto the three cross pieces. Trim off the excess with a sharp knife. The remaining parts from the door furniture kit will be used later in this video. We will now make the door frame. 
we suggest making the door frame around your door to achieve a good fit. The door frame comprises of three pieces of 47mm by 75mm timber, commonly known as 3x2. The two door posts are 2.4 meters long, and the door frame lintel is 1.6 meters long. The door frame lintel suits all three variations in door widths standard, wide, and double, and will need cutting to size. The remaining pieces supplied in the pack are 19mm by 38mm by 1.8m battens, one of which will be used shortly, and the rest will be used later when fitting your polytunnel cover. In this video we will show you how to fit doors that open inward. If you would like your doors to open outward, they can only be done once the polytunnel cover has been fitted. We will show you how to achieve this at the end of the video. Lay the previously assembled door down with the nail plates facing upwards. In case of double doors, lay two doors adjacent to each other. Place a door frame post down each side of the door. Position one door post tight against the upright. On the opposite side, ensure there is a 4mm gap between the upright and the door frame post to allow for expansion. For double doors, both posts are flush to each door. Allow a 4mm gap in between the two doors. We will now cut the door frame lintel to size. Carefully measure the distance between the two door frame posts. Make note of the measurement and then cut the door frame lintel to size. We will now secure the door frame lintel and door frame posts together. Position the door frame lintel so that the top of the lintel is 24cm down from the end of your door frame post on each side. Make a second mark centrally to the door frame lintel for the pilot hole. Drill a pilot hole with a 4mm timber drill bit in line with the second mark from the outside edge. Screw the door frame post to the door frame lintel using a 150mm screw. Repeat this on the opposite side. Ensuring there is a consistent 4mm gap down between the door and the door frame post, cut a piece of batten to size and nail it to each door post. Again, 4mm below the bottom of the door. This ensures the door frame will remain stable when moving into position. If fitting to a hard base such as concrete or timber, then this batten should be positioned 40cm from the bottom of the door post. This will temporarily prevent your door from opening. It will be removed later. The joint on the door top lintel to the door post can now be reinforced through the use of a nail plate on each side of the joint, using a nail plate and twisted nails. Now it is time to fix the hinges. To facilitate this, place timber battens underneath the two door posts. This will raise the door frame to match the same height of the door and ensure the hinges are fitted correctly. Position the single or double doors within the frame. A 4mm gap is required between the top of the door and the door frame lintel. Measure 30cm from the top and bottom of the door. Position the hinge and screw into the door and the door post. We will now show you how to fit your door to your polytunnel. We will show you how to secure the door frame to your polytunnel on both earth and solid bases. Run a taut string line across the width of your polytunnel on the end hoop across the front of the hoop. Position the assembled door frame centrally to the width and flush with the door rail and string line. Make a mark on the ground where your door posts are. If you are fitting to an earth base, you will be required to excavate a 30cm square by 40cm deep hole for each door post. If you are on a solid base, measure from the bottom of the door 10mm down the door posts and cut off the excess. Reposition the door onto the end hoop. If you are on an earth base, ensure you have enough ground clearance to open the door fully. 
Ensure the door frame is central and vertically level. Draw a line on the door frame posts where it meets the door rail and cut on this line. Reposition the door frame for the final time. Once you are happy with the position, secure the top of the door posts to the door rail using P clips. Fit a P clip onto the door rail so that both prongs of the P clip run down the front face of the door frame post. Secure the P clip to the door frame post using the screws provided in the P clip pack. Fix the P clips into position by screwing them to the door rail with a self drilling screw. Now it is time to secure the door frame posts to the ground. Position the door frame post flush with the string line and secure to the ground. The door may impede the string line, so we suggest doing this next procedure with the doors open. Adjust your door frame so that it touches the string line and then secure to the ground. If on an earth base, backfill the hole with soil or use postcrete for added strength. If on a solid base, fix the base of the plate to the floor using shield anchors for concrete or coach screws for timber. Position the door frame post plate on the ground inside of your polytunnel. Make a mark through the centre hole, then remove. If on a concrete base, drill a hole 7cm deep using a 14mm masonry drill bit. Separate the bolt and washer from the sleeve and insert through the hole in the door frame post plate and then screw on the sleeve. Locate the shield anchor into the hole and firmly tighten using a 13mm spanner. If on a timber base, drill a pilot hole 5cm deep using a 7mm timber drill bit. Finally, screw the plate into the door post using the screws provided. When the door frame posts are secured to the floor, you can remove the batten. Do not allow the door to open inwards more than 90 degrees, so use wooden stakes. This will prevent any damage to the polythene cover from the top corner of the door. To prevent wind damage, do not leave covered doors hanging in position unless the main cover is in place. Remove the doors from the door frame if the polytunnel cover is not being fitted imminently. If you would like the doors to open outwards, this procedure can be done after the polytunnel cover has been fitted. Remove the doors from the door frame and reposition the hinges so that they are on the outside of the door frame. The hinge will be screwed onto the batten of the door frame post upright. Longer screws will be required. You will need to source these screws yourself. If you do choose to have your doors opening outwards, ensure that you use a small strip of timber so that your doors cannot blow inwards. Again, this timber will need to be sourced by yourself. Now we will fit the door drop spikes that keep your door from blowing in the wind. Door drop spikes are fitted to the outside face of the door on the opposite side of the hinges. Measure up from the bottom of the door 9cm and make a mark. Position a door drop spike guide bracket so the bottom of the bracket is flush with this mark. Mark the position of the two slots in the bracket and across the top. Now reposition the bracket so the bottom of the bracket is flush with the top mark and mark the position of the two slots again. Using a 9mm wood drill bit, drill a hole through the door for the four slots. On the inside face of the door, insert pronged T-nuts into each hole. Bolt the two angled brackets to the door with the slot on each bracket at the top. Close the door to the required position, slide the drop spike down through both brackets and mark the position in the ground. Open the door and bury the tube in the required position. If your polytunnel is on a hard base, the housing tube is not required. Simply drill a hole using a 9mm drill bit to an appropriate depth.
For double doors, you will be required to repeat this process on both doors. You can find more videos to help you build your polytunnel and construct.firsttunnels.co.uk. We also have a construction helpline if you require any further assistance.